Good morning. Uh, this is episode um, 26, March 24, 2015. Um, so Carl turned uh, 17 this Friday. That was fun. Um, as I, I blogged about it and it was kind of um, the biggest talk, uh, <laughs> the, the most popular blog post I've ever done. And I got a lot of um, attention on, on Twitter and I got a bunch of donations um, on PayPal, <clears throat> basically almost as many donations um, since Friday than that I've received during the entire curl lifetime. So that was fun. A lot of attention suddenly. I, um, it turns out a little bit funny that uh, it's really hard for me to to say when 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 something gets gets attention or when they don't. And now suddenly this got a lot of attention and a lot of positive feedback. So, well, I appreciate it. That was really fun. I, I just find it curious what, what what triggers that and what doesn't. So anyway, then curl 17 and uh, we have a feature freeze tomorrow uh, for the next release 7.42.0. And um, <clears throat> so basically, if you haven't uh, pushed your patches by now, uh, you're you're going to have to wait for the next round, which then is in, a, in a, will open again, open the, the feature window again in four weeks. So not it's not that long time. <clears throat> I'm not sure if I have some other feature pending, perhaps in my patch queue that I can merge today or tomorrow before before it closes. We'll see. The two biggest changes, I mean the primary reasons why we uh, bumped the binder number now is that we're adding support for TLS false start, which is basically a way to um, limit the round trip times in, in the T TLS handshake. <clears throat> and we have a new uh, option um, that I'm about to merge that will, it's a bit of a <laughs> tiny, teeny, de tiny detail. Uh, it, it'll, it'll be called path as is, and it tells curl to not merge dot dot slash sequences because uh, in uh, the RFC 3986 says that uh, um, when you're getting when you're handling a URL or a URI really uh, when you get a, a URI that says blah 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 slash dot dot slash whatever you know as in dot dot slash as in this supposed to be you know in a directory stru structure you're supposed to go up one level so if you have one name slash dot dot slash it means remove the name before so that rfc says that we're supposed to kind of remove those parts from the path and not use that and, and we introduced that feature in uh, 7.32 to zero so we've been doing it for a while but it turns out that uh, one there are a few um, server side applications then that break uh, if we don't send the uh, dot dot sequences exactly as the URI has it, not that many, but I had reports about it. And uh, p perhaps even more importantly, there, it seems to be a pretty good way to test your server and uh, torture it by actually sending that, even though you're not supposed to. So, I mean, pretending to be a malicious person or trying to find flaws in a server, it, it sometimes is a good idea to allow that um, peculiar little path to get sent to, in particular, the HTTP servers. So we're introducing that kind of switch off that feature uh, flag. <clears throat> one, uh, one, although many little tiny protocol switches on and off. Uh, I also wanted to mention that uh, when OpenSSL um, brought their um, security thing last week you know a lot of new uh, security vulnerabilities in, in OpenSSL was announced and blah 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 and I updated to the latest OpenSSL master git master and I tried to build curl with it and blah, 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 doesn't work <clears throat> because the, it seems I mean I think in general this is a good thing that OpenSSL is is uh, moving in a direction when they're um, making more of their structs opaque, so you have to use accessor functions to actually um, get the info from from the library instead of using a lot of uh, specific structs. Uh, I think using structs for everything like that, exter uh, exporting complete structs is uh, is a 
it's hard for a library to keep um, portable for a long time. So I think they're doing going in the in the right direction here. But but the problem here is that mm, <laughs> they move this uh, struct called OCSP resp, I believe, as in uh, OCSP response. Uh, they changed that to an opaque uh, struct instead of a, a regular struct, and uh, we're of course using that struct in libcurl. And while we could change some of those um, struct references to one of those new um, function calls instead, uh, there are at least one struct member that we couldn't, but we can no longer access. And we need that because there's another problem in in OpenSSL than. Uh, in regards to OCSP stapling. So right now then, um, due to OpenSSL going this way with their API, breaking old stuff, they also break uh, our ability to do OCSP stapling until they fix their problem because there's a, this problem is reported um, in the OC, uh, OpenSSL bug tracker too. So hopefully they fix that bug at the same time because then we don't need this struct access anyway. Oh well. <clears throat> that is OpenSSL master. I, it's not in, in in any released version, I, th I believe, of, of OpenSSL yet. So we have a little time there. Um, I found that out actually also when I tried to refresh a couple of um, Coverty builds uh, at, um, of Curl. Since Coverty, you know, it scans is a static code analyzer, so it um, analyzes builds really so when we do when i want to um, analyze different tls backend builds with coverty i need to build separate builds and submit them each each one of them to coverty and have coverty scan that and tell me uh, if it finds any problems i i did that um, and it found a few new ones but i also haven't really done any scans lately for the other builds than OpenSSL, so it was good. I did GNU TLS and I did NSS, and then I was supposed to do Polar SSL, which now is called Embed at TLS. But anyway, then it said Meep, too many push, um, builds in too short time. So apparently there's a quota there at Coverty that only allows me to do a certain amount of builds within a certain time. So it turned out to be, I haven't really gone through with that completely yet. <clears throat> I'm going to continue doing that. I think Coverty is a really good tool, even if it's proprietary and stuff, but it's it has a really good uh, web front end and, and I like it. Uh, I like being able to fix all those warnings that it detects. And then I, when I worked on that, I also got in contact with our Firefox guy who's responsible with the uh, Coverty scans of Firefox. So I dove into that. Uh, wow, that is... Uh, that is a um, I, um, hard to find words to describe that. At the time when I started to look at this last week, there was more than 14,000 um, coverty warnings on Firefox code uh, on uh, six point something, almost seven million lines of code. So uh, quite a bunch. And it turns out that, I mean, that's a C++ and, and uh, there's also a lot of, um, Oh, and not even lo a lot of, I would say that the majority of these problems are uh, duplicates of the same origin. So I, I found one particular problem, in, uh, for example, that seems to be more than 1000 of the warnings originating from the same little C++ class in a header. So if we can just fix that single little issue, we can probably nail 1000 warnings. So I, th I think we have more of those that one uh, a small set of uh, suspicious, I would say, because they're not even evidently wrong. So there will be a few suspicious classes that are kind of uh, spreads all over, and they spread all over this uh, build, so they end up looking like a, a nightmare. <clears throat> well, it kind of is a nightmare too because it makes them so many. It's hard to move around among them, and it's hard to find the actual. I mean, the the bad ones that that are truly bad and should be fixed. So anyway, I went actually went through, and I've uh, I think I landed like four patches now um, since that, since I started that, and then I also 
went back to um, a couple of my f older bugs and I've tried to uh, submit bugs by, uh, patches for them. I'm kind of, kind of going around cleaning up stuff right now. I'm basically uh, I'm basically stalling a little bit. I'm waiting for the primary on online offline uh, uh, patch that Valentin is working on that's separating work offline from the detecting online offline because I think that will um, <clears throat> push us forward a great deal when it comes to online offline detection in, in Firefox. And that should um, improve a lot of things. And once we have that little patch landed, I want to start testing that. And I have, since I have an, another a whole bunch of related fixes done. So I also have a couple of other pending patches regarding the online and offline detection and what Firefox does when it thinks it's offline and so on. So, um, that's about it for this week. Uh, then the, the coming week then, as I said, what well, anyway, look at this, by the way, this is how I haven't done this in a while. So these are my kind of work computers, my work screens behind me. As you can see, that's the, um, I, I turn completely black when I show this ceiling window, but this is how, how my work place look like. Uh, well, I just wanted to mention, uh, and now I'll turn a little bit on the side. Doesn't matter. <coughs> um, I wanted to say that then there's a feature freeze tomorrow. So if you have uh, curl stuff, send them ASAP. Um, otherwise, there's not a lot happening, I think, this week. Schedule. No. Nope. So um, I'll talk to you again uh, next week. See you.